In the course of your spiritual path, not everyone supports you and not everyone approves. This full moon is in Purva Falguni Nakshatra, and a really well-known native is Madonna. So consider, last time, Dinesh de Nakshatra for the new moon, that was Marilyn Monroe. So consider the difference between Marilyn Monroe and Madonna, both iconic women. Here's the difference to point out. They were both sex symbols, but they were different. So Marilyn Monroe was very feminine and acquiesced. She had a certain usefulness because she made people feel a certain way. Madonna also has a usefulness, but in a different way. Madonna was not this blank canvas waiting for somebody to show her what to be. She was a woman with a vision, and what her vision was, what her creativity was, evolved over time, but she was the one with the vision. She was the one with the creativity. She was the one with the hard work. She was also the one who never stopped to ask people what they thought. She wasn't concerned if people liked her or agreed with what she was doing or how was she doing in the polls. She wasn't really concerned with public opinion. She had a vision and she realized that creative vision. So she is this epitome of creative force energy. Now, Falguni means the pink fleshy parts of a woman. So this nakshatra is very much about sex and sex is creativity. Sexual energy is creative energy. The two are not separate. The nakshatra is in Leo. All of these elements are encompassed in the fifth house. So anytime you are creating something, it's with this sexual energy. Now let's think about it for a minute in your own life. Esoterically, sex is not something that is stigmatized as it is in many cultures. So let's apply that principle in our own lives. While the words are very easy to say, be yourself, express yourself, be who you want to be, there are consequences to being who you want to be, especially if you are on a spiritual path, especially if you have some sense of purpose in the world, especially if you walk with direction and know that the endeavors you undertake have some more significant purpose. So what you are creating, not everybody sees it. Actually, nobody sees it, only you see it. Other people can get pieces of it and maybe get an idea of what you're doing if they are so inclined to think that way, but you can't ever count on anybody to know what you're doing. So what happens is somebody will step in without knowing what the big picture looks like, without really knowing what you're creating, and they just pick apart the little things that you do. They pick apart the little pieces of how you do things. They see sections of your work and critique those sections, but they don't see the whole of your work. Only you see the whole of your work. So again, while it seems very easy to say, oh, just be yourself, walk with your purpose, there are consequences. If you have people around you who, for example, have different religious views or different spiritual views, sometimes there are consequences to that. Sometimes you're ostracized, sometimes you're considered evil, sometimes you're considered bad, there are consequences. If you have questions about what's going on and, for example, you go to see a mental health professional and they don't know what you're talking about because they don't see the esoteric world, they don't have the abilities you have, they don't have the sight that you have, they'll look at you like you're crazy and then that doesn't help at all. Or if you talk to just a regular person who doesn't have what you have, they don't see what you see and they don't have the capacity to understand what you're talking about. What happens is that each time we encounter those situations, even though you know better, like you know better, but still it chips away at you little by little by little. So it's not, it's not the, the grand sense of purpose, it's these little things, it's these small pebbles in your shoe that make the walk harder, that make the journey harder. But all of these parts that other people think are weird, that other people don't understand, but these parts that are actually the most interesting part of you, if you could talk about anything, this is what you would talk about, keep developing those parts. Keep developing those parts. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Keep developing those parts because they are your most interesting parts. What you're curious about, this is what cures you. What you have the eye to see, the truth as you understand it, your perspective, that is what makes you your unique self. And nobody can see that but you. That means nobody else has that to offer to the world except you. So when these times come, when these small incisions of doubt come at you, you remember only you see what you see. And the fact that you see it, it's very important to bring it into the world. 
and that's what this nakshatra is about. The moon is in Purva Falguni nakshatra. Preceding that was Maga, the ancestors, and Purva Falguni is becoming immersed in another body. So you are out of the world and now you're in the world and creating. It's the power of positive procreation and actually the ability to create something. The symbols of it are a bed or a cot, a hammock, a platform. So what's associated with it is think a platform, a guru, somebody teaching on a platform. So knowledge and then the bed, a resting place. So a place temporarily where knowledge comes into the world and has a place to be expressed but for now is resting. This energy also has to do with purging and releasing because when something new comes in, we have to have let something else go. So these past few months, where we've been working on these changing situations and deciding what stays, what serves our highest purpose, what serves our path versus what impedes our path, we're making these changes and we're looking at our relationships and we're looking at our livelihoods and we're looking at our pastimes and we're looking at our friends and deciding what's there versus what should go. Everything that you've released, everything that you've calmly closed the door on has made room for now this creative energy from above. This nakshatra is also about divine partnership. So it's something from above that the individual is trying to merge with. It's um, the soul being let loose in the material world to gather knowledge and then looking at who we partner with, how we partner with ourselves, and are we working with ourselves or against ourselves? So the lunar period of these next two weeks is this place of rest and acknowledging what's now come into your life, what resources you have available to you, and looking at what your soul is here to do. Uranus is in the fourth house in this chart, and the fourth house is our place of origin, our sense of home. It can either be the literal home or where we feel at home. And the fact that Uranus is present in the fourth house in this chart is indicating that how we feel about home is going to change. Creative energy is sexual energy. So for a minute, let's consider the tie between nudity and knowledge. Think of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that story. Adam and Eve were naked. That wasn't the problem. The problem is when they became aware of the fact that they were naked. So it wasn't the nudity itself, it was awareness of it. We are made to feel so ashamed of our sex, of our body, of our physical desires, of our imaginative desires. There's barely a place you can look where someone's not trying to make you feel self-conscious because they're trying to also sell you a solution. It can take a lifetime just to get over not feeling self-conscious about your appearance or your body or what your utility is to the opposite sex because we even conceptualize our own usefulness to how, especially as women, whether or not men find us attractive. Thus, like, if men find us sexually useful to them. So it's interesting, right? Like, that dynamic's not the problem. But calling attention to that dynamic, awareness, and then bringing to conscious awareness that we are aware that that's happening, that's the problem. That's when you become a feminist. That's when you become a loudmouth person. That's when you become problematic, when you start to make other people feel uncomfortable. And that has to do with people who are trying to use your energy and redirect your creative energy, your sexual energy, in a way that's useful to them. Whereas this nakshatra is having you bring it back to yourself and the knowledge of how powerful that is and what you can do if that energy is harnessed and directed in a productive way. The setup alone of this chart is very telling. The first thing is what's called a bucket. So you have the moon, the handle, and then all of the other planets below. So you have the moon, your internal, your mentality, how you feel about things, your emotional state, casting light on all of the other elements. So how you're feeling about something how you've been thinking about something, how you've been internally processing something. Now you're looking at that new mentality and you're looking at all of the areas of your life that you've been processing this information. The other thing, right? So the moon is in the eighth house and the sun is in the second. So the two eight axis is the same axis that the eclipses were on back in December. The second house has to deal with esteem. It also has to deal with our stuff the money you make from the work that you do, but your esteem reinforced by the stuff you have to speak for you. That's opposed to where the moon is now in the eighth house. And the eighth house is about alchemy and transformation and going deep. Your most vulnerable self is the eighth house. So when you're done with your transit in the eighth house, it's a different type of self-esteem. It's a self-esteem 
that's invisible. So whereas the second house is your stuff, but you have something to show for it, and that's how you derive your esteem, eighth house is something different. So it's the esteem you get from the spiritual work that you've done, but on the exterior, you don't have anything tangible to show for it. So consider how that shows up in the world. How we consider somebody who has done well. You have cool stuff. You have a nice house. You have a good income. You've got a cool car. You've got nice clothes. You can go places. You have stuff. So your stuff somehow speaks for you. And the way we get wrapped up in that is very subtle. How you get to see what you're really about is after that eighth house action. After you've gone through these invisible depths of things that you didn't want to visit and you go through all the dirty, dark places of your existence, your background, your shame about money, your shit, like all of the secrets, all of the things that you never once said, when you come out the other side of your eighth house, the strength that you have is internal. It's a spiritual strength that you've had. Accumulation is the wrong word. So second and eighth house are different. So that's what this new moon is. Moon is in the eighth house, so you're going through something internal. Any growth you have that happens internally, nobody gives you a paycheck for that. So if it feels like thankless work, that's because socially it's not something that's particularly valued. The aspects for this chart are very interesting too. You have Saturn square Uranus as a feature. So Saturn, structure, coming up against Uranus, disruptions. So disruptions in your structure. Pluto is trining Mars. Pluto looking underneath things, and then Mars, what are you going to do about it? So now that you have this truth, what are you going to do about it? Moon, trining Uranus. Trine means that this is just a very natural energy flow. So you are now in the mood to do something unexpected. And then Sun, sextiling Uranus, there's an opportunity there. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This full moon takes place in your eighth house, and your eighth house is the house of alchemy and transformation. It has also to do with other people's money, debt, inheritance, legacy. So all of the ways that you transform, all of the ways that you make your mark in the world, but more so uh, the ways that you decide what the result of your life is going to be, the depths of who you can trust, how you can trust yourself. This is all eighth house. And what this nakshatra is asking you to do is have a look at when you're considering who you're going to be in the world what your impact is going to be, what your legacy is going to be, the purpose of your transformation. Like, what are you trying to do? This moon is having you look at who's close to you and are you in relationships that are comfortable for you so that you don't have to waste your energy on them or you don't have your energy being leaked away from you or redirected in a way that you don't want because you have some intangible thing to bring into the world. You have some spiritual purpose. You have something you've been working toward. So it's having you look at, are your relationships stable? Are you in relationships with people who agree to certain types of conduct in which everybody feels secure, everybody feels safe? And with that sense of security and safety, then are you able to create? So along with that sense of safety and security, what goes into that? People can say anything. They can say words. They can say things like, I love you. We are family. We are friends. Ugh. Words are something. Watch their actions, watch their behaviors, because this is how you determine whether or not conduct is reciprocal. So what you are contributing to something, are they contributing to something equally? Because again, like there's overt conflict, and if conflict is overt, then you can speak to it, then you can do something about it, you can act on it, but there's also covert like hidden kind of conflict where unless you really go after it, there's no chance to reconcile because the other party is acting like it's not happening although everybody knows it's happening. That's hard to work with. So if that's going on, that is not agreed upon conduct because you agree with your words, but you don't agree with your actions. That's a very different matter. And if somebody isn't agreeing with their actions and there's no reciprocity in the relationship, you spend your time thinking about that. Anytime you spend thinking about that, worrying about that, or being consumed in any way by that, that is a very different energy than creative energy. So when you're worried about the relationships, you're worried about the relationships. That's where you're focused. You are not focused over here on bringing into the world whatever it is that you were here to do. Now, Pluto, the planet of transformation, is in your first house. You've been undergoing this transformation. You've been undergoing this really critical look at yourself, this really behind the scenes, under the depths, 
all of the shadows, all of the hidden stuff. This is Pluto. This is what Pluto does. Unearths everything about you. Pluto shows you everything you didn't want to see. But it shows you that stuff for the reason of now you need to do something about it. So Pluto is trining Mars. Pluto is in your first house, so it's been looking at you. And then a trine is like nice, easy energy. Now that you see it, now you're going to do something with it. And you're going to do something with it in your fourth house. And fourth house has to do with home, family, roots, origins, the place you live, the place you're from, or alternatively, the place where you are comfortable. So with the transformation of you, if you have been coming into yourself, if you have become, if you are a person who has been working to become a fuller expression of you, a less watered down version of you, like more the you you were meant to be, and say the, uh, the people you were around, your people of origin, not everybody takes to that. Not everybody is on the same wavelength you were on. Like not everybody's, not everybody's here to do what you're doing in the world. So the sense of where you feel safe, the sense of where you feel secure, that could very well be changing. And it could be changing in a few different ways. It could be something like a very tangible expression of you are rearranging the furniture to make yourself more comfortable because you're looking at your surroundings and you're just not feeling like that's you. And you would be more comfortable. There would be better energy flow. It would just be a better expression if things were physically moved. That's one way it can express. Another way it can express is where your sense of home is, how your sense of home is, who gets to be around you and you making the decision of who gets to be around you and why they get to be around you and who doesn't get to be around you and why. When you are on a spiritual path and when you have work to do in the world, your energy is your magic. Your energy is like, it's your creative energy, your sexual energy, but like, but your ability to create is the result of energetic focus. And when you are in a situation, like home is a place you go to rest. So when home is a place of conflict or is a place where you're not accepted or is a place that is anything but rest and rejuvenation, home needs to be revamped. And that's what you're doing right now. You're deciding how you're comfortable, where you're comfortable, with whom you're comfortable, and with whom you are not comfortable. And you're making those decisions in a way that establishes an environment of being friendly to yourself, being trusting to yourself, having people around you who either understand you and support you, or even if they don't understand you, they still support you. Having people who enhance your abilities rather than drain and deplete your abilities. And with all of that established, you being able to create in the world what you are here to create. Now, Saturn, the planet of well, Capricorn, it's your planet. Saturn is the planet of restrictions, limitations, boundaries, and you've been learning this stuff for yourself. It's happening in the first house. So watch, because Saturn is in a square with Uranus, and Uranus is in your fourth house of home. Uranus is a surprise. Uranus is the unexpected. So however you think things are going to go with home, there's going to be a surprise. Since the sun is sextiling Uranus, it may very well be a good surprise. So a sextile is an opportunity. So whatever happens, it's not, uh, it's not like anything is inherently good nor bad. It's just a square is something that happens and it's a square so we know to watch for it with yourself and with your home. And with the sun in your second house of esteem, there's an opportunity to use this Uranus energy to your benefit. Have you noticed that the places you once were are not the places you can be anymore? Where you've come from, that ground is burned behind you. Who you used to know, not only do they not do it for you anymore, but you physically have a hard time being around them. Energetically, it, it just doesn't fit anymore. It's just not a match anymore. But more than intellectually challenging, it's actually physically challenging. It's energetically challenging. Socially, that's very awkward because you don't fit in. You fit in fewer and fewer places. But in a spiritual sense, this is good news because it means you're growing. So it means the clearing out. And then the people you're going to meet, you're now making room for them and they are an energetic match. Maybe they're not doing exactly what you are doing, but you guys are headed in the same direction. And you'll find more people who are headed in a similar direction. This is growth. So here's how to use the energy for the next couple weeks. Corpa Falguni is the coming together of things. So the feminine aspect from above and the masculine aspect, the material aspect from below. You're bringing them together. 
And this nakshatra is a place where the knowledge finds temporary rest and is regrouping and deciding what to do. So you have Kama, the purpose, the desire to create something. You have Venus, the ruler, who imparts wisdom and counsel and advice. And you have Vishnu, the deity, which is about the preservation of what is coming into being. So presently, we're at a place where your soul is finding rest before you begin the next stages of your journey. So what you can do in this time, pull your resources together, right? If you haven't watched the last video of the new moon, watch it. Along your path, when things weren't going how you thought they should go, you learned a lot of other things. You encountered a lot of other people. You maybe worked at different jobs. You learned different trades. You maybe developed abilities. You met people who taught you things. You encountered, you had time to read things. You had time to learn things. <clears throat> but what your knowledge looks like now, what your experience looks like now, is far more advanced than probably what you think it is. Because what you learn when things aren't going how you think, that's its own university. So you pull your resources together. Who do you know now? What do you know now? How can you apply it now? And you start to plan your next moves. And then the second element of this is that service is based on friendship and trust. So who's around you? Who can help you move in the direction you're moving? Who can you trust? It's odd too, as you start to enter into these things, people you've known forever or for a long time, they don't know what you're talking about. And then you can meet somebody who is a perfect stranger and you fall right into that conversation because you speak the same language. So we're looking at who's not an energetic or spiritual fit for you and who is an energetic or spiritual fit for you to enhance your ability to bring your creative expression into the world. So for right now, pull your resources together, integrate all of the experiences you've come through and appreciate how difficult your journey's been and how far you've come and all of the things you know now. It's not a small thing. So take inventory, integrate, Consider your partnerships and rest.